Oh, freaking Lord Christ Almighty. <laughs> the pain. The pain. Now, you know, you know it's bad when your team wins a game by a huge-ass margin, 29-3 to or whatever the hell the final score was. Let's who's even keeping track at this point. And you sat there the whole time having the brakes be bored off you. Your team dominates from beginning to end. And you can't wait for the game to end. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Bears football meeting up against Giants football. Oh, oh my freaking Lord. <laughs> Giraffe Neck versus the Red Rocket. The Ryan Pace Bowl. And hey, what a effing doozy it was. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, the pain, the agony. Oh, my God. Now, you would sit there and say to yourself, usually, your team just won 29 to 3. They dominated from beginning to end. Why would you have anything to rant about with your Bears team? Well, there's always something with this group, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But I want to get on my soapbox for a couple of other things here. First of all, the fact that Mike Glennon has made over $31 million in his NFL career is proof yet again that you don't actually have to be good at your job to make a shit ton of money. While certainly not in the class of the king that is Sam Bradford, still pretty impressive that Giraffe Neck has been able to rip off teams for that much money over the years. Of course, more than half of that coming from Ryan Pace and the Chicago Bears. Like, you want an indictment of why a Ryan Pace should be fired? You remember... They volunteered $18 million to the charity of Giraffe Neck and were excited about it in 2017. Holy Christ. He was so bad that the Giants are sitting there and running on third and ten. And they're down double digits already across midfield early in the second quarter. They're down like 14 to nothing. Fourth and three. And they're punting it. Because they're terrified of what Mike Glennon's going to do. I realize noodle arm Jake Fromm sucks. And I had that shit pegged back when he was at Georgia. That said, you cannot possibly tell me he's any worse than this. Holy hell. And to the notion that the Maras would want to sit there and let Dave Gettleman retire. But keep Joe Judge and promote from within. Why would you want anybody that's been associated with this dumpster fire? The New York Giants are easily a bottom three to five roster and organization in the NFL right now. So you want to promote from within and keep stability of a shit show? Did you watch this game? Are you watching this team? Holy Christ. Your GM gave big money to Kenny Galladay to not do shit. Your offensive line is a frickin' mess. And Mike Glennon was starting games for you in 2021. What the fuck is wrong with you? And then also, I realize you're not getting the A-listers for the commentary team when you're talking about Giants and Bears, January Bears football. When both teams are out of the playoff race, there's not much to play for. But goddamn. Can the commentators, specifically Jay Feely, actually do some fucking research here? It's one thing if you want to go down the Patrick Mahomes route, if Mitchell Trubisky is actually still suiting up for the Chicago Bears, playing in this game, and stinking it up like he did the previous four seasons. That's not the reality anymore. Yes, that is absolutely a condemnation on Ryan Pace that he got it wrong back then, but times have changed. More importantly, there are so many other things that you can pile on on top of this as to why Ryan Pace should be shown the door just like Matt Nagy's going to be shown the door. You didn't need to go to that lazy talking point. Here's the talking point. He hired fucking Matt Nagy. The Chicago Bears were 5-10 and 10 coming into today's goddamn game. It's not that hard. 
Jay Seeley, perfect example of just because somebody played in the league doesn't mean that they know anything about what the fuck they're talking about. Holy shit. Brutal. Bad. So you take two crappy teams with two crappy offenses, two crappy head coach, two crappy organizations, mix in two crappy commentators, and what do you got? Bass! Football! Oh my god. I mean, it was brutal. Like, how could you possibly even feel good about the fact that you wasted three hours of your life watching this shit? Especially if you're a Bears fan. Like, even then, honestly, what are you celebrating? You beat a bottom three team in the league, and if you had any type of competent offense at all, this should have been a 45-48-3 game. As many breaks and opportunities that your defense was able to get because the Giants' offense is just that pathetic and shitty, and that you couldn't even break the 30-point mark in this fucking game? Which points to the dumb dick decision to stubbornly insist on starting goddamn Andy Dalton instead of Nick Foles here. Well, maybe it's a good thing that Justin Fields didn't play in this one. You, you'd love to watch him play. You want to get him valuable in-game reps, but you want to avoid any catastrophic injury. Like, I'm 50-50 on that one, honestly. But Foles just won last week and actually had to do something to help his team win last week. Meanwhile, you're watching Andy Dalton stink up the fucking joint. All of his early throws, incredibly short and off the mark. Almost interceptions, interceptions, all this other bullshit, poor pocket presence, typical Andy Dalton crap. Yet this is the asshole that both Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace, because of their collaboration and cooperation and communication, thought was the best quarterback to start the season for the Chicago Bears. There's your condemnation of Pace, too. And there's many more. Seven seasons, zero playoff wins. Could we keep going? We absolutely could. But what's the fucking point? Like, even this game was really bad. And then they're starting the talking points about how great Desai is. and that They're ninth in the league. They're ninth in the league in yards allowed, yes. And also 24th in the league in points allowed per game. Tell the full fucking picture. Opposing offenses don't have to gain as many yards because they get their points in early and they beat them going away with it. Obviously, the defense is not the biggest problem in Chicago, but to prepare, pretend like the defense hasn't been a problem this year is fucking delusional, dumb dick bullshit. The one positive from today's game, and the win is not really a positive, let's be clear, the one real positive of all of this, and even then it's a BASS football thing, is that Robert Quinn, it took a while, but he finally got that sack, and he beat out Richard Dent for the single season Chicago Bears sack record. He now sits at 18 sacks on the season. What an incredible comeback story. Should be arguably comeback player of the year. Should certainly be getting some defensive player of the year love. And if this Bears defense was actually better and this team was better, he probably would. What he's been able to do without Khalil Mack for a good portion of the season on the other side and the other injuries on this Bears defense has been nothing short of remarkable. And best of all, he broke Richard Dent's record in 16 games, so we don't have to talk about any asterisks or he didn't really break it or any of that shit. He got it done. My hat's off to him. I salute him. But otherwise, like he even got Matt Nagy when you're up huge, fourth down. Now you want to sit there and throw out of the wildcat? And even then, Comet was freaking open and Montgomery just didn't put enough on it. But oh my God, this game was so brutal and so bad. And because the league has expanded to 17 games of a regular season, as much as you might have wanted to pull an Antonio Brown if you were a Bears or Giants fan today while watching this goddamn game at home, the worst part of it is you got one more game left in the season. Oh, brutal. Just brutal. It could be worse, though, if you're a Bears fan. You could be a Giants fan. Incompetent ownership. Well, Bears got that, but the Giants got that too now. Incompetent head coach, the Bears got that. But the Giants not only have that, but apparently seem poised and determined to keep Joe Judge for 2022. Oh. 
the Bears have some thought that they could have the future of the franchise at the quarterback position. The Giants should have none of those delusions. It's bad. It's the best thing that could have happened to the Giants, though, today was losing this game because at least their own pick stays at fifth overall as of right now. And the Bears winning doesn't really change the slotting for the Bears' first-round pick that went to the Giants in the Justin Fields draft they trade back in April. But, oh, my God. This was a game that you wanted to opt out of. Because this, this was brutal bad. Brutal, brutal bad. Defense, defense, offense lacking. Bears football!